In this video, we're going to take a look at the alternating series test. Again, I strongly encourage you to keep track of all of the tests that we've learned. This whole chapter is full of tests and it's very easy to get them confused. So make yourself a sheet like this so that you can refer back to it whenever you're working with series. The alternating series test obviously works for a series that is alternating. And by that, I mean we're going to have a negative one to the n or a negative one to the n plus one, where every time n increases, the sign of our value in the sequence is going to change. That's why it's called an alternating series. So our test works when we have two conditions that are met. The first condition says, the limit as n approaches infinity of the series or the sequence is equal to zero. And then the second condition says, if that one's met, then we have to verify that each subsequent term is going to be less than the term before it. Again, if our first condition isn't met, and this should look familiar to you, if this condition is not met, we can just say using the nth term test for divergence that the series diverges, because remember the nth term test for divergence says if you take the limit as n approaches infinity and it's not equal to zero, then the series diverges. So if we check it and the first condition isn't met, we don't even have to check the second condition. We can just say it diverges using the nth term test for divergence. So let's take a look at our first example. We have the summation as n goes from one to infinity of negative one to the n over e to the n. Remember that we have to check each condition. So we're going to check condition one and we're going to say the limit as n approaches infinity of a to the n. So what is a to the n? When we're looking at this function, we want to really take out the negative one to the n. We want to take out the alternating part. So we're going to let a sub n, I think I said a to the n, but you understand I meant a sub n. We're going to let a sub n be one over e to the n because we're not going to worry about whenever we have the alternating part, we're going to take that out of the equation. So I want the limit as n approaches infinity of one over e to the n. Now, what is that limit? As n increases, the denominator is going to get increasingly large and therefore the value of the fraction is going to get increasingly small and approach zero. So the first condition is met. The second condition says that we need to verify that a sub n plus one is less than or equal to a sub n for all n's. So if a sub n is one over e to the n, as we set up here, a sub n plus one is one, oh, well, let's write it this way, a sub n plus one would be equal to one over e to the n plus one. So my question is, is this correct? Can I correctly say that one over e sub n plus one, or e to the n plus one is less than one over e to the n? And I can, so you can just reason through it and say, okay, well this guy's going to be bigger and therefore the whole fraction will be smaller or you can say, hey, this is like e to the n and e to the first, and obviously that makes this denominator bigger, and therefore the whole fraction is smaller. So essentially I have now checked both conditions, and they're both met. And so I can say, since both conditions are satisfied, The summation as n goes from one to infinity of negative one to the n over e to the n converges by the alternating series test. Let's take a look at another example. Again, I've left all of the information on the screen so that you don't have to look back and try to memorize what the alternating series test said. So we're going to look at the summation as n goes from one to infinity of negative one to the n plus one times n over three n plus two. 
So the first thing I need to do is think about what's A sub N. And A sub N is when I essentially take out the alternating part of the series. So A sub N is just N over 3N plus 2. So now I'm going to take a look at the limit as N approaches infinity of N over 3N plus 2. So as N approaches infinity, remember I'm looking at these influential terms. So what I'm going to end up with is the same thing as the limit as N approaches infinity of N over 3N, which of course is just one third. This does not equal zero. And so again, if the first condition isn't met, we are going to use the nth term test for divergence to conclude the series diverges. So I'm going to say, since, oops, since the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n does not equal zero, then the series diverges by the nth term test. Let's look at just one more example. And again, I've copied over all of our rules so that we don't have to memorize anything yet. And the first thing I should look at is what is A sub N? And that is anything that does not include the alternating part of our sequence. So we're gonna take that part out and a sub n is anything left over, which in this case is one over n plus one. So for step one, I'm going to find the limit as n approaches infinity of one over n plus one. So if I replace n with infinity or larger and larger numbers, then the denominator is going to get larger and larger and larger, which means the overall fraction will get smaller and smaller and smaller and approach zero. So the first condition is met. The second condition is to ensure that A sub N plus one, which would be taking this guy and adding one to N, which would be one over N plus one plus one, or one over N plus two. Does that, is that always less than or equal to one over N plus one, which of course is A sub N? So this is the question, is this true? Again, using that same idea, if I increase this denominator more quickly than this denominator, then this denominator is going to be bigger. And if this denominator is bigger, the overall value is smaller and therefore this does hold true. So that condition is met. So again, I'm just going to say, since both conditions are met, The series converges by the alternating series test. Up next, we're going to take a look at the alternating series remainder, which is not a test, but if you'll recall, we have always been asking two questions. Does the series converge or diverge? And if it converges, what is the sum? So we haven't really been looking at the sum, and so the alternating series remainder is going to help us come up with an estimate of the sum of an alternating series that converges.